Friends, this eye belongs to a physician who is 75 years old and he takes tamsulosin for prostate gland disease. So I am expecting a floppy iris in this case. I have taken up this case for surgery. All the incisions are made. Now I am injecting air bubble. I want to stain the anterior capsule and I want to use a little bit of adrenaline to dilate the pupil further. The pupil has dilated to about 6 millimeter or 5.5 millimeter. This is okay if this dilatation remains the surgery can be done comfortably and see after injecting adrenaline the pupil has dilated little more it is about 7 millimeter now if this dilatation remains there is no problem in surgery but it is not so viscoelastic substance is injected this is HPMC it is spread over the corneal epithelium for better visualization and now I'm going to do capsulorexis as usual I raise a capsular flap by a 26 case needle here it is I cut the capsule and pull it to make this flap I hold this flap with a uterita forceps I go anticlockwise and to rexis and see in this case the pupil has dilated more superiorly than in other places so I cannot go along the border of the pupil here superiorly I have to be a little away so that the rexis becomes round otherwise it will become oval and now hydro dissection is being done the pupil is still okay size it is little it's gradually decreasing in size as the intraocular pressure decreases the pupil becomes small viscoelastic substance is injected and now is the time to enter into the eye to introduce the phaco tip into the anterior chamber I am using Oatly Cataryx 3 phaco machine here goes the tip in this case I have gone bevel up now as soon as I try to hold the nucleus see the iris tends to prolapse through the main incision through the side port and the cataract is quite soft it's very difficult to hold so what I do is I just support the nucleus and try to divide the nucleus into some parts into some fragments I am very gentle very slow so that I don't catch the iris so that I don't kiss the margin of the pupil I see as soon as removed the side put pupil dilated and as I start emulsifying again it becomes small so my strategy in this case is use the chopper only to place fragments in convenient positions so that I can bring it near the phaco tip and emulsify it like this piece what I am doing is I am lifting it up the apex is kept in such a way that it will come at the aspirating port and I am pulling it towards uh, the clear zone and I could do that and I am emulsifying and removing it every moment I am very careful not to touch the pupillary margin at this time the pupil has become very small 
less than 5 millimeter it is about 4 millimeter now so my strategy is not to catch the iris with the phago tip this is the last nuclear fragment and it has come out very well phago power used in this case is 40 percent flow rate was 35 and vacuum was 300 and now cortical cleanup is to be done this is HPMC now I use a Simcoe cannula in this case to remove this cortical matter again I am careful not to catch the iris in the aspirating port of the Simcoe cannula and here what I'm doing is I'm going under the rexus margin and catching the anterior portion of the cortex and this is the right approach go under the anterior capsular rim and hold the anterior portion of the cortex and pull it towards the center let me repeat go just under the anterior capsular rim hold the anterior portion of the cortex pull it towards the center and then aspirate it well, whatever you use either bimanual or simco this is the approach some cells some lens fibers are sticking to the posterior capsule and it is being dislodged by irrigating fluid and now is the time to let me see yes now is the time to do some more polishing by irrigating jet from the irrigating probe of bimanual IA yes this I call hydro polish I am using hydro to polish the posterior capsule I am not aspirating anything I am not pinching the posterior capsule when I started this about say two years back incidence of small posterior capsular tear during polishing of the posterior capsule has drastically reduced so hydro polish is I think a very good thing to learn now I'm injecting viscoelastic substance and in this case we have selected a good monofocal intraocular lens this is Technis one from Abbott medical optics very good lens it, re it retains its clarity for many many years usually doesn't develop any micro vacuoles that is glistenings over the years the lens is in the capsular bag now the viscoelastic substance that I have used to implant the intraocular lens is to be removed and flushing the antechamber with BSS and then I go behind the eye well then I use bimanual irrigation aspiration to remove the viscoelastic substance thoroughly dear colleagues in this video what I want to emphasize is that if the pupil size is this much say 4 millimeter or 5 millimeter during rexis and later on it becomes 4 millimeter during emulsification of cortical emulsification of nuclear pieces it is possible to do 
such cases without using iris hooks or any people expansion device. We just have to be very cautious. We must take utmost care not to catch the pupillary margin, not to catch the iris. Be very gentle to the iris. If we want some dilatation of the pupil, we can come out, we can inject some visco and use the chopper only when it is required. Like to place the pieces just in front of the aspirating port of the FECO tip. In this way, we can manage such cases very well without using any iris hook or any people expansion device. In this case, we have removed the viscoelastic substance by this time. And now, this is a little bit of air because I want to inject some moxifluxus in and I want to maintain the anterior chamber. Anterior chamber becomes shallow. Whenever anterior chamber becomes shallow, you can inject little air to maintain the intraocular pressure because I am not using any anterior chamber maintainer I have to be careful to maintain the anterior chamber depth and maintain the intraocular pressure now I have hydrated the side ports and this is the final lavage of anterior chamber I irrigate for few mm, seconds and then I aspirate for some time and then form the anterior chamber and conclude the case. Thank you very much. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills.